All right, students, we're going to go ahead and take some notes on this thing called titrations. So go ahead and get out your notebook so we can get started. Remember, you can always have the notes quiz open so that as we cover the answers in the lesson, you can answer them as we go along. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our essential question for the day. By what process do we determine and calculate the molarity of an unknown acid or base? And we're going to do this through a process called titration, which is the method we use to figure out that unknown concentration, that unknown molarity of an acid or base. And we do this by using a standard solution. So by using a solution, this standard solution, which is a solution of known concentration, of known molarity, we can use this to find out the concentration of an unknown acid. So in the lab we're going to do, at the end of the week, we're going to be using a one molar sodium hydroxide solution. And we're going to be using that and our knowledge of balanced chemical equations to figure out the concentration of an acid with an unknown concentration. So it's a way for us to use something that we have a known strength, a known concentration, to figure out an unknown strength or unknown concentration. And so this uses a process we call neutralization. The acid that we're going to be using of unknown strength, uh, we're going to be able to neutralize it with a base of known strength and that's going to turn it into water, a neutral pH material. So by knowing that this acid has a low pH, that sodium hydroxide has a high pH, and together they're going to neutralize to a neutral pH, we're going to be able to calculate how much acid there was in the container by adding how, you know, a known amount of base. And so when we neutralize these things, we're just basically taking the hydroxide group on this sodium hydroxide, the hydrogen off of the acid, and combining them to make water. And then the other parts, they're going to combine to form a salt or also known as an ionic compound. So here's kind of what the process looks like. We're going to have that acid with an unknown concentration in this flask. We're going to add a pH indicator, and that pH indicator is going to stay colorless while that material is still acidic in this particular method. We're going to use this thing called a burette, which is an extremely precise um, measurement device for liquids, and we're going to slowly add base drop by drop into our acid until we reach that neutralization, at which point that indicator is going to change color to this light pink. And so you can see that we will be able to figure out how much we've added by subtracting the amount we began with by the amount we ended with. And so that way we'll know exactly how much base we put in there to neutralize that acid of unknown strength. And here's kind of what that looks like. You know, you just swirl the flask around, add, use your other hand to slowly add the base to the mix. And then you'll see that pink color when that indicator changes from clear to, to that pink color. So here's the equation that we're going to use. And it's just, you know, really what you want to do right now is just copy this down. You probably should pause the video right here and write down this information, and then we'll go over it a little bit at a time as we progress through the rest of the slides from this presentation. So once again, pause the video here, write down this information, and we'll explain it in future slides. So here in our example, we're going to be um, using 10 milliliters of an un, you know, of a acid, in this case, hydrochloric acid, we don't know its concentration, but we know we have 10 milliliters of it. In this example, we're going to be using a 3 molar sodium hydroxide solution. And if we were to have needed 25 milliliters of this 3 molar sodium hydroxide solution, uh, we're going to be able to figure out the concentration of that acid once we reach that equivalence point, that neutralization point. So the first thing we want to do is identify the coefficients in the equation. So here's that equation. And remember, if there's, you know, these ones are not usually there, but I've put them here so that it can help you remember that hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide just react in a one-to-one -one ratio according to this balanced chemical equation. 
So then we're going to, you know, run through all those different bits. And we're going to use this in our equation here. So here's that equation from before. We've got on the left side our standard, where we know the concentration, we know the volume used, and we know how much of it is involved in this ratio. Over here on our unknown side, we know the volume used, we know the coefficient um, in the equation, but we don't know the concentration. So let's see how we would use that equation from the previous slide to figure this out. So here we're going to put the molarity, that three molar uh, sodium hydroxide, we're going to put that three molar right there. We're going to convert our 25 milliliters into liters by moving the decimal to the left three times. So that's going to be 0 0.025 liters, and that's equivalent to 25 milliliters. And then we're going to put the coefficient from the equation in the denominator. So we're going to multiply three by 0 0.025 and divide by one. And it might not seem that important to divide by one, because I mean, it, it, dividing anything by one is itself, but these coefficients aren't always going to be one to one. So we want to get in the habit of using that in this equation. All right, so let's look at our unknown side. We don't know our molarity, but we do know we used uh, 10 milliliters of that acid. And again, we need to convert that into liters by moving the decimal to the left three times. So we're going to get 0 0.010 liters. And this coefficient is the coefficient from the hydrochloric acid in the equation. And then we can just simply do the math. 3 times 0 0.025 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.010 times 1, because remember, we've got to sort of cross multiply these, if you will. And when we do that, we get 7.5 molar hydrochloric acid out of that. So this makes sense because it was a smaller volume of hydrochloric acid that was neutralized with a larger volume of sodium hydroxide. So we would expect to see a higher concentration for that to happen. I would recommend that you pause the video right now, run this through your calculator, and make sure that you're getting 7.5 molar as the value. All right, we're gonna move on to the next slide then. So this equivalence point, this end point, that's the point in the titration where the um, stock solution was added to the unknown and we have neutralized them. And so the point of this slide is to help you see what that looks like in the beaker. So we're gonna start with an acidic solution, that hydrochloric acid like we saw in the previous slide. And we're gonna slowly add base and it's going to start moving towards the basic end of the pH scale. So we've added that base, and it's going to uh, raise the pH. And as we get to this light pink zone, that's where we're going to have that neutral pH, that pH of 7. That equivalence point has been reached where all of the hydrogens in the hydrochloric acid have reacted with the hydroxides in the base. If we were to continue adding base, we would start to see that solution become very, very pink. And we want to avoid going all the way this far. We want our solution to stay this nice light pink color. Once you get this really dark pink, that's when you know you've gone too far. And then, you know, and that would show us that it was too basic and we've blown past the equivalence point. All right, so sometimes the ratio is not going to be one to one here. In this example, we've got sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide reacting. And because we've got two hydrogens on this acid, it's going to need uh, twice as much sodium hydroxide in order to neutralize it. So one mole of sulfuric acid would need two moles of sodium hydroxide to reach that equivalence. They would be in a one to two ratios. Let's apply what we learned to this student practice problem. Pause the video right now and see if you can determine the answer to this question. It might be helpful to plug in variables that you know, as well as write a chemical reaction equation. Let me go ahead and help you with this really quick. For let's start and see what we have in our problem. Notice here that we needed to determine an unknown concentration of sulfuric acid. And to do so, we have this 25 milliliters of a one molar sodium hydroxide stock solution. Well, that's part of our titration equation. Over here, we have the molarity and the volume of our stock solution. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those numbers into this formula. 
In this problem as well, we use 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid, our unknown concentration. So I'm going to plug that into the volume of our, concent of our solution where we don't know the concentration to. Now it looks like we don't have anything else we can plug into here, but we still are missing a few variables. We need to figure out the ratio of our stock solution to our unknown in order to plug in these variables down here. So we need to write a chemical equation. And not only that, we need to be able to know the coefficients that go in front of our stock, as well as our solution with unknown molarity. These coefficients are the ratios down here that we're gonna plug into our equation. Now all we need to do is a little bit of algebra to solve for our main problem, namely the molarity or the concentration of sulfuric acid. To do that, we're gonna multiply 25 times one and divide it by two, and then all we need to do is divide it by 20. If we do all that, the molarity of our unknown concentration is gonna end up being 0.625 molar. All right, the last thing you need to do is take a moment to review and highlight key terms from your notes, ponder and ask questions, and summarize by answering the essential question. Good luck.